name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome once again to All Saints Vicarage in Pontefract and to our service this Wednesday morning of Holy Communion on the 6th of May, in the third week of the Easter season. Let's just still our hearts and our minds for a moment or two in his presence as we prepare ourselves for worship. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We pray together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. In baptism we died with Christ, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, we might walk in newness of life. So let us receive new life in him as we come to him and confess our sins and penitence and faith and receive his forgiveness. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins. We confess to you our weakness and our unbelief. For we have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and have doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. And Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we say the glory. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we pray in the words of the Collect. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your Father's sheep, Teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of the Acts, is found in chapters 12 into chapter 13. The word of God continued to spread and to flourish. And when Barnabas and Saul had finished their mission, they returned from Jerusalem, taking with them John, also called Mark. Now in the church at Antioch there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaen, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And while they were worshipping the Lord uh, and were fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. And the two of them, sent on their way by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia and sailed from there to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues, and John was with them as their help. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our psalm this morning is Psalm 67. And the heading for the psalm says, tells us that it is for the director of music to be sung with stringed instruments. I'm afraid I've got neither of those. It also begins and ends with a, a word, selah. Selah, I've been told that it sort of means to lift up, to exalt and to declare. It's sort of a, an instruction for those who are going to sing it as to how to sing it. Not the notes, but in what spirit and what style of singing that this is one that is going to be sung as praise to Almighty God to lift up his name, to exalt him and to declare him. The response to the psalm is, may all the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you, O God. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us so that your ways may be known on earth and your salvation among all nations. May all the nations praise you, O God. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May all the peoples praise you, O God. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May all the peoples praise you, O God. May God bless us still, so that the ends of the earth will fear him. May all the peoples praise you, O God. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life, and those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Praise to you, O Lord. Then Jesus cried out, Whoever believes in me does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. The one who looks at me is seeing the one who sent me. And I have come into the world as a light, so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. If anyone hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge that person. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. And the very words I have spoken will condemn them at the last day. For I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. I know that his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now, when I was very young, before I had any brothers or sisters, mum and dad had set themselves up for cycle camping and had done it properly. The year before I was born, they'd bought a second-hand but very nearly new tandem, a proper touring model with three cyclo gears made by the Sun Bicycle Company. When they were back, when they before rally took them over, they were an independent British make. It was fitted out with panniers and a saddlebag, of course, and then I came along. So it was then fitted out with a Watsonian sidecar as well, just for me, complete with an, es an essentially what was essentially a hammock inside for the baby of the family. They also had real down-filled sleeping bags, very lightweight, a canvas bucket, a stove and pans, of course, and they had a tent. All this is really just to introduce the tent. It was a black's good companion, a lightweight tent made with Egyptian cotton, and that was over 60 years ago. 
And believe it or not, both the tandem, the tent, and I think the canvas bucket as well still work. And I know that the tandem and the tent have been used in recent years. In fact, the tandem was used just last week. But it's the tent name is really what I want you to remember and to think about. A good companion. I think it's a wonderful name for a tent that you're going to carry around and that you will need to perform to be weather tight and light and helpful in your pursuits of, in our case, happy holidays in our often unpredictable British weather. The name tells you exactly what you're going to get, something that's reliable and helpful and always there for you when you need it, especially there for when you need it. Barnabas. The name of Saul's companion chosen by the Holy Spirit to accompany him. His name can mean son of consolation or son of encouragement. And I think you would agree that those two ideas really are very connected and go together. Maybe little Barnabas was so named as a baby because on his arrival it was seen as a consolation maybe for some family loss. Or as an encouragement that whatever else was going on in the world around them at the time, this gift of new life was still a wonderful thing. I'd like to add to this idea and translation that Barnabas was also a good companion who lived up to his name in all circumstances. And his companion Paul courted some very difficult circumstances and I'm sure was very much encouraged by his companion in those troubles. You don't ever read that Barnabas ever actually got Paul out of a scrape or a situation. But I think that is just the point. Barnabas was not a universal Mr. Fix-It of situations. He was a good companion who would always be there with Paul in those situations, be it prison or persecution or whatever. He was a son of encouragement for those around him. And to have a good companion in life is a wonderful thing and an essential thing. We have the best. Do you realise that? The one who said, I will never leave you or forsake you, is faithful and is true. And he is prepared and willing to be there with us in whatever mess we get into. In fact, that's really the whole point of the story of the Incarnation, the story of Emmanuel, God with us. In Jesus, God comes alongside us and promises always to be there, even on those days when we cannot and possibly don't want to see him. He's still there. And he calls us to do the same for those around us. We are his people called to be like him. By being there for this lonely, hungry and thirsty world. And for those for whom things are just too much. And above all else, to be there for each other, our brothers and sisters in him. To share his love as he taught us to and as he commands us to. So that the world will know that we are his and he is ours. That indeed is the story of this table that we gather around. Here Jesus does for what us what we cannot do for ourselves by coming alongside us, by sharing with us. He bridges the gap of separation that sin creates by joining with us in death so that we might share with him in his resurrection. Amen. So I invite you to join with me as we affirm our faith in our faithful God. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And we believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so let us bring to the feet of our faithful God, the one who always hears, always knows what we need before we ask, and always answers our prayers. Let us bring to him our praise, our worship, our prayers and our intercessions. Let us pray. Loving and faithful Father of us all, we bring to you this world which you made and which you redeemed to yourself through your Son. We pray for its people, great and small. Guide and direct and give wisdom to this world's leaders at this time of uncertainty and of confusion. We pray for a unity of purpose and action between nations and governments, to work for the good of all and a free sharing of resources and of knowledge and expertise in the work to find answers to the problems that we all face at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, we bring before you your church our brothers and sisters around the world, especially those who live where there is persecution and hatred of all who own your name and follow your Son. Strengthen and keep them safe, that their lives might bring glory to your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray especially at this time for our National Health Service, for all who work in our hospitals and care homes, research and testing laboratories, for those who visit those who cannot care for themselves in their own homes. Keep them safe and strengthen them, even as we thank you for their devotion to the needs of others. We pray for all who are unwell, afraid and failing in health, remembering for a moment those known to us and for those for whom we have been asked to pray. Remembering in particularly Nikki as she recovers and rebuilds her strength, home now from hospital. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring to you all who mourn the loss of loved ones today. Remembering those who have recently died, amongst them Anne and Donald and Mark, Mr Briggs and Sylvia and Colin, Lily and Doris. Comfort all who mourn, and as you walk beside them in their grief, lead them and us to the joy of knowing you, whom to know is life eternal. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body on the cross. And we meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Please, as you are able, share the peace with those around you, your neighbours and friends around, as we prepare the table to come into his presence and to share bread and wine. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God for ever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. 
It is indeed right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and all the powers of creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and of wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way after supper he took the cup and again he gave you thanks. And he gave it to them saying drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and we look for the coming of your kingdom and with this bread and this cup we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. For great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise, and as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. For blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. So let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us, as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we break this bread, that we might share in the body of Christ. And though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace.
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. So let us pray. Living God, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Good Shepherd, and in, in his love to lay down his life and rise again. Keep us always under his protection, and give us grace to follow in his steps. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as you were the servant of all, and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. before the blessing we're going to sing a hymn we've sort of sung part of the words or said part of the words already because the hymn is a well known holy 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 lord god almighty it was written by bishop reginald heber and he might rightly be counted as the grandfather really of the hymn book of we as we know it and indeed of the hymn and its regular use by congregations in worship as a parish priest, he began to realise that a good hymn could unite praise and teach and carry a message. And he initially used them and indeed wrote many of them expressly for and used directly after the creed in the service. To pick up on the epistle and the gospel readings for that day. Sadly, this hymn was published in the year that Heber died. But it's remained, I suppose, top of the charts ever since, really, up or there amongst all those favourite hymns. And whilst it is based on Revelation 4, 8, and really he designed it and wrote it to be used on Trinity Sunday, it's a wonderful explosion of praise in which the saints, the angels and we ourselves just sing his glory and tell his worth. So let's sing this hymn. Falling down before thee, which 
which words and art and evermore shall be. to the blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God the Father and the love of his only Son our Saviour Jesus Christ and the abiding fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you and those who you love and pray for both this day and forevermore. Amen. Our service has ended, but our serving of him who calls us continues. As we go in the peace of Christ, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia.